Eliab. Josiah, welcome. Many days have passed since I saw him for the last time, but it's as if he's still talking to me. I think I can still see him too, as if he had never left us. But what do we do now? What'll happen to us? Jesus told us to wait for him. He'll come back. He'll come back! You are going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, he said. You will receive the power of the Holy Spirit, and you will be my witnesses in Judea, in Samaria, to the Earth's remotest end. Don't be afraid. We've only got to wait now. He will come. For the Feast of the Purification, 50 days after Passover, Jerusalem is full of pilgrims, men and women with their children, and beggars and rich merchants, those who are hard of hearing and cold of heart, who are going to the temple to offer sacrifices. How will we get all these people to listen to us? Mary, stop a moment. Sit down with us. Let me serve these sons of mine. We're I'll go. Who is it? What you do to one of these little ones, you will have done to me. Who are you? My name is Zacharias. I knocked on many doors. Then a man told me to knock at this house. The Lord sent you. No, the Lord sent you. To see whether we'd recognize him in you. Why? Do you know me? No, Zacharias. But the master said, anyone who welcomes those whom I shall send welcomes me. He chose us one by one, twelve. He said to us, I will make you fishers of people. Then he put us to the test. By accepting persecution and the cross, he put our faith in him to the test. But one, one of us betrayed him. 
Actually, I too, I too, betrayed him. And then you cried. You repented. Yes, it's true. I cried, and he forgave me. Whereas Judas became frightened when he saw his crime. But it was too late, so he killed himself and was buried in the field, bought with the reward for his betrayal. Now the place that Judas occupied among us is empty. That's why we are here today, to choose someone out of those who've been with us since the beginning, having witnessed his resurrection with us. Joseph. I suggest Joseph. Everyone calls him Justice because he's such a just man. I say Matthias. Matthias has been with us since the beginning. You all know him. The white one for Matthias and the black one for Joseph. Ma, come here. Cover your eyes and pick a stone. The Lord has chosen Matthias. Matthias. From today, you're one of the twelve, a witness of Jesus. What's he saying? What's the Greek saying? He's saying he saw that silk in Jaffa for less. They'll strike me dead. It's impossible! Go on, tell him! Oki apagareno te. Petu que celo. Where are you going, stranger? What did he say? Swindler. How dare you! Shut up! Enan, take a date for each of you. And we will offer the rest to the temple. All the rest, Grandfather? Yes, Enan. A small sacrifice for Pentecost. listening to me. You have seen come to pass what the prophet Joel foresaw. I shall pour out my spirit on all mankind. Their sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. And all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Who are they? They're the Nazarene's disciples. Didn't they all run away? Surely that man is from Galilee. How is it that I heard him speak Arabic? But I heard him speak Greek. Men of Israel, people, listen to me. Jesus the Nazarene, who descended from David, the man sent to you by God, was betrayed. He was crucified. You saw him. You are drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. How could we be drunk? God raised this man, Jesus, to life freeing him from the pangs of death. And of that, we're all witnesses. Jesus triumphed over death, rose to the kingdom of the Father, and now sits at his right hand and has obtained that the gift of the Holy Spirit be poured onto us. You're making it up! Let him speak! The house of Israel can be certain that the Lord and Christ is this Jesus who was crucified. He's the Messiah whom the people of Israel have awaited for many centuries. What are we to do? You must repent. Every one of you must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. That's how you'll receive the Holy Spirit. We are announcing this promise in Jesus' name for you and your children.
Save yourselves from this perverse generation. Come with us. We'll baptize you in the name of Jesus. Men, brothers, come with us. The Messiah has shown us his might. Come, come into the water. Being baptized means dying and rising again. Brother, come. You will be reborn in the kingdom of heaven. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. So that day, the faith of Peter and the other disciples and witnesses of Jesus was the beginning of the story of the Christian community in the world. Peter's gesture, that of baptizing the men and women of Jerusalem in the name of Jesus, created a great scandal in the city that only a few weeks earlier had witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus between two thieves on the hill of Golgotha and the flight of his disciples. But when the Holy Spirit descended on them, the twelve apostles and the others who were with them suddenly felt very brave. Now they were inspired with new strength and courage, and they announced to everyone that the Lord Jesus had risen and that he would come in glory and in the Master's name they worked miracles, confirming the authority of he who sent them. Give something to a poor cripple. One day, while they were going to the temple, it happened that a cripple asked them for arms. Give something, sons of Israel. We haven't got any silver or gold. Oh. We'll give you what we have. We can only give you what we have. In the name of Jesus the Nazarene, walk. Oh, 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 oh. This is a miracle, a miracle. Now go and show yourself in the temple. A miracle, a miracle in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. It was one of the Messiah's disciples. He said, in the name of Jesus, walk. And I walked. Did he say, in the name of Jesus the Nazarene? Yes, that's what he said. It was him. It was him. Arrest them. But he healed me. What do you know about what is happening in Jerusalem? How can you still be so blind? Why are you so surprised? It is in the name of the risen Messiah that this man was restored <gasps> to health. Thus, what was announced by the prophets has come true. Seize them! The Sanhedrin accuses them. They are rebels, like their master. He healed me in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. They're doing to us what they did to Jesus. Blessed be his name. In those days, Jesus' disciples had already formed the first Christian communities in Jerusalem. They shared their houses, their possessions. They gave money to the poor. But the word of Jesus when he said, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves, was coming true. Peter and John were judged by the Sanhedrin. By what power and by whose name have you healed this cripple? By the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene whom this Sanhedrin crucified and God raised from the dead, only in his name. Stone him! Stone him! To death! Kill him! Leave these men alone and let them go. For if what they preach and what they do is the work of man, it will wither and die. But if it truly comes from God, you'll oppose it in vain. No one can win against God. The advice of the wise Gamaliel was accepted. Peter and John were beaten, but their lives were spared. The Sanhedrin has let them go! Many people were converted to the word of Jesus. But not long afterwards, Stephen, one of the first seven deacons elected to manage the possessions of the Christian community, 
was stoned to death by order of the Sanhedrin. The persecution of the Messiah's disciples exploded in Jerusalem and soon extended to the whole of Samaria. The first Christians had to flee the city and the villages of Palestine. Obeying the order of the risen Messiah, men and women sought refuge in the Jewish communities of Asia Minor, Greece, and even Rome. Among those who stoned Stephen was a dignitary of the temple. His name was Saul. He was from Tarsus, and since his father was a Roman, he enjoyed Roman citizenship. The high priest of the temple sent him to Damascus to make sure that the Jews there were punishing all those who accepted to be baptized in the name of Jesus. But while Saul was approaching the city, determined to spill the blood of Jesus' followers, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I can't see you. I'm, I'm completely blind. Jesus. Jesus! What do you want me to do? Jesus, the crucified Messiah, has risen. The Lord sent Saul a disciple who taught him the Christian faith and baptized him in the name of Jesus. And so Saul was welcomed into the Christian community and sent by Peter to spread the gospel with Barnabas. I met Saul of Tarsus, now called Paul. He's here with me on this ship. I'm his witness and his scribe. He preached the word of God in Antioch, Ephesus, Corinth, and also in Athens. Like Paul, Peter and the other apostles traveled throughout Asia Minor, announcing the word of God. Wherever they went, they preached to Jews, pagans, Greeks, and Romans, men and women of every race. And many believed in Jesus and became brothers in the faith. But it was precisely this universal aspect which created dissent among the first Christians, who were all Jews to begin with. Some refused to accept that outsiders could be given the opportunity to join the faith. In fact, they told pagans, if you don't have yourself circumcised according to the law of Moses, if you don't become Jews, you will not be saved. Finally, as Paul explained to all those who gathered to listen to him, a solution was found. In order to resolve the controversy, Peter the Apostle ordered us all to meet in Jerusalem. We debated, we prayed, and we were inspired, as you know. I am an Israelite from the seed of Abraham and the tribe of Benjamin. And I tell you that God has not repudiated his people, the people of Israel. But I tell you also, as Peter said, it is God's will that pagans as well as Jews must receive the salvation of Jesus without any obligation on their part to observe Jewish practices. God bestows the Holy Spirit on them as he does on us without any discrimination. Because their faith in Jesus purifies their hearts, God has not repudiated his people. And just as a new branch is grafted onto an old olive tree, we announce Christ the Messiah to all peoples. He alone is our salvation. Now Paul is being taken to Rome in chains. He was arrested by the Israelites and handed over to the Romans so that he could be condemned to death as an instigator. But since he is a Roman citizen, he has exercised his right to be judged by the emperor in Rome. Unfortunately, the emperor is Claudius Nero, who is a sworn enemy and persecutor of the Christians. There is a large Christian community in Rome and many of its members have been baptized by Peter, who came here to spread the word. And here, Peter and Paul will be executed like so many others, becoming martyrs and witnesses of the truth announced by Jesus. Rome is a beautiful, incredibly rich city. But in these times, the blood of Christians is shed all too often. Those who refuse to renounce the baptism of Jesus 
and do not offer sacrifices to the pagan gods are fed to the wild beasts in the arena. But the blood of the martyrs only encourages the spread of Christianity. More and more people are being converted, creating innumerable witnesses of Jesus for a kingdom without frontiers. Jesus had said, I send you like sheep among wolves. But he also said that he will never abandon those who decide to follow him. Today, like in the past, Jesus is present in his church, which with the Eucharist repeats the ritual of the Last Supper in Jerusalem with Jesus and the Apostles. In churches in every corner of the world, wherever there is a priest, these words are spoken. Then he took bread, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup and told them, Drink, for this is the blood of a new covenant, shed by many for the remission of their sins. Do this in memory of me. And so through the Eucharist, Jesus remains alive amongst us and is the salvation of us all. Jesus Christ, the only Savior of the world, yesterday, today, and forever. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles, upon Mary, the mother of Jesus, and upon other disciples that were present in the upper room. After a few days, persecuted by those who had had Jesus crucified, they scattered into the villages and cities of Judea and Samaria, and then even farther beyond the boundaries of Palestine. Everywhere they went, they proclaimed the word of Jesus, and founded new communities of Christians who lived in accordance with Jesus' teachings. Many, many followed them. It was as if a bright light suddenly began to shine in the darkness. Slaves and the free, the rich and the poor, men and women, all discovered a new reality in Jesus. They discovered that they were children of the one God of all creation, mysterious yet the font of life, creator of every existing reality, in the name of whom Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, himself God, had opened the door to the kingdom without frontiers, a kingdom in which, living the law of love, each person would find salvation from evil and sin. This law of love was a new law which brought to fulfillment all of the existing laws of that time and era. A law which, when respected, made people and the whole world capable of happiness that they had never experienced before. This love and peace brought all people back to God, the eternal Father and Creator, giving them eternal life. And so it was that many became Christians. And they were not deterred by the risk of persecution and even of death. In fact, to become a Christian meant giving up the religion of the Roman Empire and its gods made of gold or stone and denying the divine nature of the emperor, the penalty for which, by Roman law, was death. Peter, Barnabas, Paul and John and the other apostles and disciples of Jesus left Jerusalem and returned by the coasts of the Mediterranean Sea and in a few years created new communities beyond Judea and Samaria, in Syria as far as Damascus and even farther still. In Antioch, a large new community was formed and it was here that the followers of Jesus were first called Christians. Soon communities were born in Tarsus, the home of Paul, Antioch of Pisidia, 
Colossae and the beautiful Greek city of Ephesus, and then in Troad, Thessalonica, Athens, Corinth, Philippi, Crete, Malta, and finally Rome. Within the first decades after Pentecost, it was from these first communities that Christianity spread throughout the whole Roman Empire, going even beyond its boundaries, reaching even as far as the so-called barbarian tribes. From then on up to this very day, generations of generations have seen the light of Jesus, have been baptized in his name, since they have believed in him and in him have found salvation. Jesus is the star. Oh,